Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a basic service on a Toyota Yaris, so it's a 2013 1.3 litre petrol Yaris. We're just going to run through quickly the tools that we're going to need and the, the parts that we're going to be installing. So firstly we've got some new engine oil, so it's a 5W30 full synthetic. We've got a new uh, air filter as well, and then a new oil filter, both from Ryko. And then we've also got, in this case, a new cabin filter as well. So that's for your air conditioning that comes in. As far as the tools are concerned, we're going to need a set of spanners or a socket set. You're also going to need, this is really helpful. So this is an oil filter socket. So that fits over our new oil filter and that's going to help us get that on and off really quickly. Um, and then we've also got some replacement gaskets from Toyota for that oil sump plug. A few extra things that are pretty handy. We've got a torque wrench here so that we can torque our, our new um, sump plug back up. And then we've also got some gloves and some paper towel and a little sump pan down here to drop the, drop the oil into. We've just put the Yaris up on some blocks just because it's quite low to the ground and that's gonna just help us get, it, get under there quite easily. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to drain the old engine oil. So we're gonna need to basically get underneath the car. We'll probably need a torch for this one and we're just gonna drain it into this pan here. Um, All right, so I've cracked that. Okay, yeah, I see. So that means I can undo it by hand now and I'm going to be able to put the pan back under there. But all I'm going to be doing is undoing, unscrewing that plug by hand and it's going to let the oil drain out into the pan. So when you do this, you ideally want to try and pull the plug away rather than drop it in the oil. Yeah. But in this particular case, I don't think I'm going to have a choice. Okay. If I don't drop it in the oil, I'm not going to get my hand out of the way quick enough. It's coming out now. There you go. So can you see the oil draining out? In an ideal world, it would still be clear. It would be, a, it would be like a brownish color, but clear. Now that we've removed the sump plug, um, we're going to leave the oil to drain for a while. It might take half an hour, an hour just to get everything out of the engine. Um, while, we're, while we're waiting for that, we're also just going to loosen the filler plug up the top of the engine just so that we don't end up with any kind of vacuum inside the engine that stops all of the oil draining out, similar to how if you're you know, using a water can or something like that, you wanna make sure there's an air release at the top so that all the water's allowed to flow out. So while that oil's draining out, we're basically gonna do everything else for the service, um, and then we'll come back at the end and we'll put the plug back on and put the new engine oil in. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to replace the air filter. So we've got a new air filter here. We use the Ryko website. They have a filter finder where you can put your model into the into the website and it'll tell you exactly what part number you need for your filter. But we're gonna remove the old one first from the air box. So this is the air box just here. Basically that's receiving all of the air from outside and ultimately it's going into the engine for combustion. So normally the way you remove your air filter is just via some clips. So you can see this is one of those clips here and we're just gonna remove those clips and then we're gonna be able to pop the top of the air box off and get to the air filter. Sometimes it'll have clips on all four corners. This particular one just has two clips and then it hinges on the other side. So we'll remove that clip, remove that clip, and then we're able to just open the air box. And there you can see our old air filter in there. So it's looking really dirty, unfortunately. Ideally, you wouldn't want it to look that dirty when you're changing it. When you take the air filter out, you just wanna make note of what the orientation was. So on this particular one, we've got three round edges and then one square edge. So we know that it has to go back in with that square edge at the front left. Just for comparison, that's the new air filter there. You can see that's just a nice clean white filter paper and that's what you want. So we're gonna pop that one in the bin, that square edge going in the back left. We're just gonna pop the new air filter inside the air box and it's just seated down nicely. If I tried to pop that in a different way, it wouldn't quite fit, so I wouldn't be able to I can't get it down in there, it won't close properly. So I'm gonna pop that in there like that, it sits nicely down there. And then we're just gonna to have to fiddle with the air box a little bit to get it to close. Sealed nicely, you just wanna make sure it's all flush around the edges because you don't want any dust to be able to get in through the sides. You just close those two clips and, um, and that's all there is to it really. The next one we're gonna move on to is changing the oil filter. The oil filter is basically located on this car underneath the engine actually quite close to where the sump plug was. Again, we've got a new Ryko oil filter here. So I've used the same filter finder website with Ryko and they've told me I need a Z386 oil filter for this particular engine. And then I've gone and purchased this fantastic little tool as well. So this is called an oil filter socket. Um, and what that does is it allows you to, to put a socket on the oil filter, which makes it much easier to actually get the old one off and the new one on. I'll just show you in the engine bay from above where that is. Having a look in the engine bay, so this is the top of the engine here. This is our engine dipstick. And this is the location of, I'm just touching the oil filter there. So that's the oil filter on the, on the bottom side of the engine. So I'm gonna basically unscrew that. So I've put the 
oil filter socket on an extension now so I can get in there a little bit easier and you quite often do need these for getting to your oil filter. So if you don't have this, it can be quite a difficult job to do. I'm gonna move my oil pan a little bit so I'm gonna try and make it so it's gonna capture this as well as still be underneath the, the sump plug. So the oil filter is not actually very tight, it's just hard to get to. So once you've got it a little bit loose, you might be able to just do the rest by hand. All right, yep, that's nice and loose. So I'm just gonna try to make sure I capture that oil when it falls. I'm just unscrewing that. So it's just gonna drain whatever was in the oil filter at the time. Uh, you, if I had more access, I might put it to the side. Ultimately, it's gonna go in the bin either way, so I'm not really that fussed. You just gotta be careful when you do this as well because the oil is hot. Can you see up there where my hand just was? You'll see where the where the new oil filter is gonna go. It just has a thread on the end of it. It just screws on like a nut would. We might just wipe around there just to clean up the oil and then we'll put the new one on. Oil filters will generally come with a plastic cover just to protect the mating surface. So I'm just gonna undo that. It's just packaging basically. So this is the rubber mating surface. We're gonna screw the new oil filter. This is why I said it's like a nut. That's your thread just there, just like a nut. That's gonna screw onto what is essentially a bolt coming down from above. What we do here is we're gonna open up our new engine oil and we're basically just going to pre-lubricate the surface of the new oil filter. So we just open up the engine oil. So. Quite often they won't have this little cap. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on the tip of my finger and then I'm going to rub that around the edge just to pre-lubricate that seal, just so that when we go to tighten that, it's not just raw rubber. Some oil filters will come pre-lubricated, but this particular one was a dry surface. We don't use a torque wrench for something like an oil filter. What we do instead is we go until it just touches the surface it's tightening up to, and then we go a certain amount past there, for example, half a turn or three quarters of a turn. It's not on the box, it's on the oil filter. Tighten minimum three quarter turn after gasket contacts mounting pads. What we're doing is finding the spot where it goes. Yeah, so you'll see the bolt. Yep, so now you wanna, you wanna turn it to the right. You just make sure you're holding it perfectly parallel with the bolt that's sticking down. Yep, that's, that's it. So just slowly turn it and you're just gonna keep going until you get to the point where it touches so it stops. First of all, we need to make sure the socket's actually pushed up onto the oil oh, filter. Try and keep it on if you can, just so we know how far we've gone. So we've gone about a quarter of a turn now. So we've gone about halfway now. And now we're gonna go three quarters of a turn. We've finished draining the oil. I've just put some paper towel on the ground just to catch the very last little drips now that we've removed the pan from under there. But we're actually gonna reuse that plug, that's why we have to find it. Obviously it's covered in oil, but you can actually see that underneath, on the bottom of the plug there, there's actually the old washer or gasket. It's actually stuck onto the bolt. We pretty much just wanna try and see if we can split those apart and then just follow it all the way around. So you wanna try and avoid reusing gaskets if you can. So that's gonna create a nice new seal when we put the new one on. We're just wiping away the oil that's around it because it'll be easier to wipe that now while there's no uh, bolt sticking out. Again, we're just gonna do it up to the point where it starts touching. And now we can take our socket and torque wrench and we can start doing it up. Keep doing that and it's just gonna slowly start to squash that gasket. And eventually we'll get to the point where we're at 30 foot pounds and it'll start to click. Yeah. That's it. So that oh, now that's at 30, it. yeah. Okay. Sump plug is reinstalled. And you always wanna make sure you remember to do that before you put your new engine oil in. Otherwise your engine oil that you pour straight in the top will come straight out the bottom. All right, so now we're gonna add some new engine oil. We've just removed our engine oil filler cap and we've just gone and got a funnel just to make it a bit easier to pour the oil in. So we've had a read of our, our owner's manual and it's told us to use 5W30 oil and 3.7 liters. So this is a five liter can. We're gonna to aim to have about 1.3 liters left and we can tell by these 500 mil increments on the can. The reason we're pouring on the side is because it pours smoothly. If you try and pour with the top of the can at the top, you get glugging. Yeah. So that's good. That's probably 3.8 or so. Cool. And then we're just going to take the funnel out and just wipe it off uh, just so there's no oil dripping oh, around the place. Go easy, okay. Just, just shove some paper towel in the bottom of it and then it should be okay. Then we just need to put the new cap back on. Now that oil is all gonna be just flowing down through the engine and in a few minutes, we're just gonna dip that just to make sure, just to verify that it's on the right point on the dipstick. So while we're waiting for that oil to settle down into the engine before we check the level, we're just gonna replace the cabin filter with a new one. So we've just got a Micro Shield Ryko cabin filter here. Normally the cabin filter is located somewhere up behind the glove box of the vehicle. So we're just gonna go and have a look at that now. So we're just gonna open the glove box first 
Now normally on one side, there will be a little bar that drops down or a, or a wire or something like that that helps tension it and stops it slamming when it opens. So there's a little clip on the end here. We've just got to squeeze those two together. And when we squeeze those two together, it allows us to um, unlatch the little arm. So I'm squeezing these two end bits together. So, that, so there's two clips that are acting as hinges at the bottom. We've just got to try and lift the glove box out. So it'll just pop out of the hinges at the bottom. I'm applying some force to lift with my hands the glove box upwards. There we go, that's done on the right and that's done on the left. And then I'm able to just pull the glove box out. All right, so if we have a look in here, the cabin filter is housed inside here. So we're just gonna squeeze this together and we're able to pull that away. And then we can pull it out this way and that, that piece comes away. And that's our old cabin filter just in there. So you can see it's quite dirty as well. So I'm just gonna pull that straight out. And as before, we're just gonna make note of which way it was orientated. So I'm just gonna pop that down there. So we've got our new air filter, cabin filter I should say. On here, if we have a look, it actually, it says up on it. So we know which way up the filter has to be because this one is different on each side. It's actually a micro cabin filter. It's a bit of a better, better one than the last one that was in there. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna massage that. All right, lovely. Now, all we have to do is pop this little panel back on. And again, that has an up on it as well. So that tells us which way that needs to go. And that just pops in these two holes at the end and then clips in at this end. So clips in like that and that just holds the filter from coming out. And the last step is just to put the glove box back. So we've got the two clips at the bottom, one on each side that just have to push into these holes here. And then we just have to reinstate this little arm. So see these two bits that stick out? They've just got to go into the two end holes. And then we're going to push up and that's it. So we just pull it back out and just clip it onto the two little prongs there and they'll automatically stop it from coming off again. Now that it's had a few minutes to drain down into the sump, we're just gonna verify that we put the right amount in. So we're just gonna grab, normally you'd use a tissue or something, I'm just gonna use some paper towel. You would also normally do this when the, when the oil is hot, but we're still gonna get a good idea just from dipping it here. So we just pull the, pull the dipstick out we just wipe off anything that was already on there. In this case, we're probably not checking it at the, at the right temperature, but it's still just gonna give us an idea that the oil is in fact up to the stick. We're not trying to run the car with far too little oil. So I'm gonna pull that back out. There's oil on the stick, that's a good sign. See the oil is up past the high line on the stick, so that's good. It's nice and full. And then we're just gonna pop that back in. Just make sure that's all the way in. Check that that's tight, and now that's all good. We're finished doing our oil, we've done the oil filter, We've done the air filter and we've done the cabin filter. That's pretty much the basic service. 